Hi all, so the next topic is the multi-stage counter-current liquid-liquid extraction. So at the end of this class, you should be able to uh, determine the number of equilibrium stages in a multi-stage counter-current liquid-liquid extraction process. So this can be done either by a graphical method or analytical method. And also you can determine the minimum solvent flow rate for a given liquid extraction specification and also to apply the mass transfer coefficient approach in the design of back towers for liquid-liquid extraction process. Okay, so by now I hope you may be wondering what is the equipment that can be used for the liquid-liquid extraction process. So as you know, in LLE, the two phases must be brought into intimate contact with high degree of turbulence to obtain high mass transfer rate. Because uh, if in distillation you have a column, then you boil, uh, you have a reboiler at the bottom here. So this is your separating agent, which is the energy separating agent. As for absorption and stripping, your separating agent is uh, for absorption is the liquid solvent. And for stripping, your separating agent is the uh, stripping gas. But for liquid-liquid extraction, the mass separating agent is liquid and also the feed is liquid. So you are mixing two liquid phases uh, to, to, to achieve the uh, separation. So when you mix the two liquid phases, the two liquid phases must be brought into contact vigorously. You need to facilitate the mass transfer between the two liquid phases. So after these two uh, the two liquid phases come into contact, they must be separated. However, the separation of the two liquid phases is not as straightforward as those in absorption and distillation. Because if in absorption and distillation, the separation of two phases is rapid and easy because it's distinctly uh, different phases, two distinct different phases which are uh, the liquid and the vapor phase. So because of the difference in density in the liquid and the vapor phase, it's easier for you to separate the two phases. However, in the liquid-liquid extraction, the density difference between the two liquid phases is not that significant and thus the separation is uh, more difficult. So FYI, there are two main classes of LLE equipment. Uh, which are one, the vessels where mechanical agitation is provided for mixing or number two, there is no um, mechanical agitation but rather the mixing is done by the flow of the fluids themselves. So here you need to uh, imagine what would you do uh, to mix the two liquid phases so that you can achieve high degree of turbulence to facilitate the mass transfer between the two phases. You want to help the solute to transfer from the uh, feed mixture into the solvent phase so that you have a distinct extract and raffinate phase and how you want to uh, separate the extract and raffinate phases which are both in liquid phases. Okay, so for the first type of equipment, which are the vessels with mechanical agitation, these are some examples of uh, vessels with mechanical agitation used to create the high degree of turbulence to facilitate the mass transfer uh, from the so for the solute to transfer from the feed to the uh, solvent phase. So as you can see here, um, the first one um, A here, this uh, this is. I don't know how to pronounce this actually, but maybe it's Schiebel. Schiebel column, first design and second design. So as you can see in the Schiebel column, there is a rotating shaft uh, and then the liquid, light liquid coming in and heavy liquid coming in from the other stream. So here, um, the light liquid and heavy liquid depends on the density. Okay, so it doesn't matter if, you, if your uh, carrier and solute is in the light liquid or in heavy liquid. So let's say, let's say in this case, let's say if your uh, carrier and solute is the light liquid, so you have your feed here, feed mixture, i.e. the carrier plus solute. And let's say if your solvent is a higher in density compared to the carrier and solute phase, then this one is your solvent inlet, okay, heavy liquid in. Then uh, it will be mixed using the rotating shaft and then after mixing and after the mass transfer, 
uh, the light liquid will be coming up and the heavy liquid will be coming at the bottom of the column because of the difference in density. So there is an additional um, feed stream here if your liquid-liquid extraction is a fractional extraction process. But we're not covering that in, in this chapter. You can read more about it if you uh, require for later for design project or IDP or process equipment design later. Okay, so for shibble column, there are two designs. Uh, a and B, but essentially the concept is the same. Liquid, uh, light liquid coming in from one stream, heavy liquid coming in from the upper part of the column, and then there's a rotating shaft help, helping to mix the light liquid and the heavy liquid. And after reaching equilibrium, the light liquid and heavy liquid will uh, leave the column at the top and the bottom of the column because of their difference in density. So oh, there's also a third design of the shibble column with similar operating mechanism. And also there's a mixed core column in the number D. So here, same thing, you have one stream where the light liquid coming in and then the, there's a heavy liquid coming in from the other stream. Then you have this baffle or uh, agitator. You it agitate the two liquid mixtures after reaching equilibrium. Then the lighter liquid with less density will come will leave the, the tower at the top of the column and the heavy liquid with a higher density will leave the column at the bottom of the tower. Okay. Okay, so for vessels without mechanical agitation, they use the movement of the liquid phase to facilitate the mass transfer. For example, here we have two types of column, which are the uh, spray columns and also the mixer settler extraction columns for uh, for spray columns if you look at the uh, diagrams a and b for diagram a you have a light liquid coming in from the bottom and heavy liquid coming in from the top and in this um, diagram a it is the light liquid that is dispersed and the heavy liquid is in the continuous flow so here you may have some other equipment uh, before you feed the light liquid in to disperse to help spray the light liquid into the column such that it will be in the dispersed phase whereas the heavy liquid here is just the flowing just continue flowing at the normal rate it's a continuous uh, uh, liquid phase whereas the light liquid is in the form of a dispersed liquid phase so they, this is how the spray type columns uh, help to facilitate the mass transfer between the two liquid phases and for part b uh, the heavy liquid is the dispersed phase and uh, light liquid is the continuous phase so it depends um, on different design different specification we cannot really tell which one is better you have to really try and error by doing the simulation uh, which one is uh, having more recovery and with less solute concentration in the raffinate phase for whatsoever you know um, we are in this slide i'm just giving you some examples on how the equipment works for liquid liquid extraction but at the end of the day later when it comes for you to decide on the design of your column you have to consider the different aspects Okay, for the next uh, type of column which doesn't have mechanical ag agitation, so it's a mixer settler extraction column. So here, the feed here, you already mix uh, in advance the solute phase, uh, sorry, solute plus carrier phase plus the solvent. You mix uh, in advance as a whole feed. Okay, so the feed mixture consists of car the carrier and the solvent phase. And then you mix the feed into this vessel and finally you let it settle. So here is the mixing part, here is the settling part. Okay, so after the mixture becomes uh, reaches equilibrium, then uh, it will be separated into the extract and raffinate phases. In this case, the extract is uh, less dense than the raffinate. It has less density. It has a 
yeah, smaller density than the raffinate phase. So that's why the raffinate phase comes at the bottom of the column and extract phase comes at the top of the column. So which one, which liquid phase comes in the top or bottom of the column does not depend on whether it's an extract or raffinate, but rather it depends on the density of the liquid. So for part B of the mixer settler extraction column is a uh, combined mixer and settler uh, function. So in this case, you have a small part here where you mix the feed uh, phase. So there's a it says here, although without mechanical agitation, but you can still see the buffer, meaning that um, the, the agitation is separate from the separation. I mean, the, the mixing part is separate from the uh, settling part. Okay, wait, wait I, let me rephrase that later. So let me just um, explain the combined mixer settler thing. So here you mix the feed mixture, so same like the part A. The feed mixture here contains the carrier and the solvent. And of course in the carrier you have solute also. So you mix them and then you let them settle where you have two distinct um, liquid phases out here. So if you compare the vessels without mechanical agitation uh, to those vessels with the mechanical agitation, so we say that if the column, you have liquid in, uh, okay, heavy liquid from uh, coming from the top and the light liquid coming from the bottom and then you have a baffle, a rotating baffle to mix and then you have the outlet. So this is what you call vessels with mechanical agitation. But if you have something like this, uh, mixer settler it is called without mechanical agitation because uh, at the end of the day uh, when it settles it settles itself without the mechanical agitation it, the feed here is already mixed beforehand you don't have a separate uh, liquid mixture which you have to mix inside the column but rather you already mix before you um, let them enter the column uh, or you can read more if you think I'm confusing you here So there are uh, different flow arrangements in liquid-liquid extraction. Uh, as you can see, we have a cross current, a counter current, and also we also have fr fractional extraction. So let's go through the cross current uh, arrangement. So in cross current, you have the feed mixture here. Whenever uh, I say it's a feed mixture, meaning it's the solute plus uh, carrier mixture, okay? And then the solvent. So solvent. Uh, comes in, this is stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. So these are the flow arrangement in multi-stage LLE. Okay, so for cross-current arrangement, you have a new fresh uh, batch of solvent coming in at each stage of the uh, LLE process. So you mix the feed with the solvent, then you get extract and raffinate. And then uh, the raffinate you take it to the uh, another stage of the extraction so you mix it with another fresh batch of solvent and then you mix it and then it will reach equilibrium and then you have a second uh, extract and second raffinate phase and then the second raffinate phase you still want to treat it so you mix it with another batch of fresh solvent then you get um, another batch of uh, extract phase and also another batch of uh, raffinate phase so this is uh, cross current using a fresh batch of solvent every time for the for each uh, stage however for counter current extraction so here you have the feed entering at stage number one so feed here is the solute plus carrier and then you have a solvent fresh batch of solvent uh, coming at the bottom of the tower Let's say this one, uh, in, in this example, we have all uh, three number of stages for cross-current, counter-current and fractional extraction. So for counter-current extraction, the only fresh batch of solvent is entering from the bottom of the column. So here, then um, you have extract, okay, leaving the each stage. And then um, for the feed, the carrier rich phase, you have raffinate. 
So here the only fresh solvent is this uh, this part, and the fresh feed is only in this part. For fractional extraction, you have a feed solute plus a carrier entering somewhere in the middle of the column. It's a called a feed stage, okay? It's feed stage, and then you have a wash section above the feed stage. And we also have a strip section uh, below the feed stage. This is analogous to the distillation column where you have a rectifying and stripping section in the uh, fractional distillation. But here is your fractional extraction. So if your feed is here, then your fresh batch of solvent comes in at the bottom of the tower. Then you have raffinate. This is called the uh, wash. And this is your final extract uh, phase. But in this lecture, uh, as you know, we only have two weeks to cover for the liquid-liquid extraction process. So we cannot really cover everything. Actually, no courses in university can really cover everything. So in this course, we are only going to take our um, to, to focus in the counter-current uh, multi-stage liquid-liquid extraction. Okay, counter current only. So if you are interested to read more about cross current and fractional extraction, you, you can do so on your own. Right, now so uh, let's take a look at the counter current liquid liquid extraction process and the overall mass balance. So if you look at the diagram on the right side of the slide here, it looks similar to the uh, absorption multi multiple stages uh, absorption column. So here, it, this is the process flow. So you have a feed stream containing the solute A to be extracted, enters at one end of the process, and the solvent stream enters at the other end. So now in this case, as what we did in the single stage extraction, the L phase is for the carrier rich phase. So the L phase, you have the solute entering at the L phase. So L and the composition corresponding to the L phase is the X. Um, phase. As for the solvent, let's say uh, the V phase is the solvent phase, so Vn plus 1 here is the fresh solvent, so you have the composition in terms of Y. Okay, so the feed stream containing the solute A comes at the top in this case, and the solvent stream comes at the other end in, in this case in from the bottom. Then the extract and raffinate streams flow concurrently from stage to stage and the final products are the extract stream V1 leaving the stage 1 and the raffinate stream LN leaving stage N. So here at first you have um, the solute A in the beginning, L0 you have XA0 and at the LN you have XAN. For uh, stage N plus 1 you have YA N plus 1. And also for V1, you have the composition of A, Y, A1. So as what we did in the single stage um, LLE, we only take into account the composition of two components uh, and the composition of another component can be obtained using material balance. So if you want a complete notation, you have XA0, you have XC0. Here you have XA0 and XAN and XC at the stage N. Y A N plus one, Y C N plus one, Y A one and Y C one. So um, our convention in this lecture, A is the solute and C is the solvent phase. Okay. So if you do an overall balance on all n number of stages, so you know you have a in equals to. So you in the inlet you have L0 plus Vn plus 1 equals to uh, outlet Ln plus uh, V1. So M, here M is the mixture flow rate. So M is the total flow rate and it's a constant throughout the column. Okay, so M here, M is the mixture. Uh, L0 is the inlet feed mass flow rate. Vn plus 1, the inlet solvent mass flow rate. V1 is the exit exit extract stream and LN is the exit raffinate stream. So if we do an overall component balance on component C, component solvent, so at L0 you have XC0, at V1 you have YC1, at LN you have XCN, 
at Vn plus 1, you have Yc n plus 1. So if you do an overall balance on component C, inlet equals to outlet equals to the mixture chlorate and mixture composition, Xc in the mixture. So if you rearrange equation 12.2 here, you can obtain equation 12.3. You can obtain XCM in terms of the uh, L0 and Vn plus 1 fluorate and also in terms of Ln and V1 fluorates. And similarly, if you do component balance for A, then at L0 you have XA0, at V1 you have YA1, at Ln you have x a n and at v n plus 1 you have y a n plus 1 so similarly if you rearrange the overall component balance on uh, component a then you can obtain x a in the mixture in terms of l naught and v n plus 1 and also in terms of l n and v 1 okay so uh, from equations 12.3 and 12.4 so uh, this is equation 12.3 and this is equation 12.4. Uh, from these equations, you can use these equations to calculate the coordinates of point M, the mixing point on the phase diagram. So as we know, uh, this point M ties together the two entering streams, L0 and Vn plus 1, and the two exit streams, V1 and Ln. So uh, in the lecture 11, we know that these all must lie on the uh, same line, okay? So usually, the flows and composition of L0 and Vn plus 1 are known, okay? You must know the feed flow rate L0 and also you must know or you must specify the solvent flow rate Vn plus 1 so you can know and you can also uh, specify the desired exit composition, Xan. So, uh, from, yeah, usually, these are the things that you know or you can specify. So from this equation 12.3 and 12.4, if you plot it on the uh, phase diagram, in this case, the uh, right angle triangle phase diagram, uh, L0, Vn plus 1 and M must lie on the straight line. And same goes with the exit flow rate, Ln and V1 must also lie on one straight line, on one line. And uh, Ln and V1 must lie on the face envelope. It must lie on the in the face envelope. Okay, uh, what it means here is that okay, let let me draw the multiple stages in the horizontal manner instead of in the vertical. Okay, so this is stage one, this is stage two, and you have some number of stages n plus n, 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 n until capital N. So if you have here L naught is your feed flow rate and then um, you have here Vn plus 1 is your so fresh solvent flow rate. So here you have Ln and then here you have V1. Okay, so um, V1 and Ln, they are the equilibrium composition from each stages. So V1 here and then here is L1. Okay, L1 and V1 must be in equilibrium as what we have seen in the uh, single stage LLE previously. Okay, so if you have just stage 1, so V1 and L1 must be in equilibrium. So for stage N, Ln and uh, Vn must be in equilibrium. Thus, whatever composition that are uh, in equilibrium, they must lie on the face envelope. So, we, where is the face envelope? So, here, this is the face envelope or the equilibrium curve, in other words. Okay? So, Ln must lie on the equilibrium curve. Also, V1 coordinate must lie on the equilibrium curve. So, let's do an example. In this example, pure, pure isopropyl ether at the rate of 600 kg per hour is being used to extract an aqueous sol solution flowing at 200 kg per hour containing 30% of acetic acid, component A, by countercurrent multi stage extraction. The desired exit acetic acid concentration in the aqueous phase is 4%. So calculate the compositions and the amounts of ether extract and the aqueous raffinate 
and you are given the liquid liquid equilibria data at 20 degrees Celsius for the system acetic acid water and isopropyl ether. So first let's draw a diagram for the multiple stage uh, liquid liquid extraction. So let's draw this is stage number one and let's say this is uh, stage number two and so on and so on until stage number N capital N. So you have a uh, liquid feed entering L0 equals to uh, 200 kg per hour aqueous solution containing acetic acid XA0 equals to 0 0.30 and then there's no uh, solvent in this uh, feed so XC0 equals to 0 then you have a pure solvent VN plus 1 flow rate uh, 600 kg per hour because it's a pure solvent, so YA n plus 1 equals to 0 and YC n plus 1 equals to 1. Then um, the raffinate flowing from stage N is LN with composition XAN and XCN. And the desired composition in the aqueous raffinate extract at the end of the uh, multi-stage extraction is uh, 0 0.04. And also you have uh, from stage 1, you have the extract phase V1 with compositions YA1 and YC1. So these are the knowns and the unknowns. So what are the unknowns? You have to find LN, XCN, V1, YA1 and uh, YC1. So given the equilibrium data, you can plot the equilibrium data and connect the tie lines. But before that, we want to find out the composition or the coordinates of the point M, the mixing point. Okay, so from the equations that we have derived before, XAM equals to L0 XA0 plus VN plus 1, YA N plus 1 divided by L0 plus Vn plus 1 is equal to 200 times 0 0.30 plus 600 times 0 divided by 200 plus 600. You get XAM equals to 0 0.075. Do the same for XCM. So XCM, the composition of component C in the mixture, uh, XCM equals to L0 XC0 plus Vn plus 1, Ycn plus 1, divided by L0 plus Vn plus 1. Put in the numbers 200 times 0 plus 600 times 1, divided by 200 plus 600. So you get Xcm equals to 0 0.75. So your coordinate for the uh, point M is... Uh, 0 0.075 and 0 0.75 and besides point M you can also plot the known coordinate for V and plus 1 the coordinate here is 0 and 1 so 0 1 and also you can plot the coordinate for L naught is 0 0.3 and 0 and also for point LN you know the XA coordinate 0 0.04 but you don't know the C coordinate so but you know that LN must lie on the equilibrium curve so after you've drawn the equilibrium curve you can plot the point LN given the uh, composition of A in point uh, LN all right so um, let's say you have plotted the equilibrium line so you can see that here the red line refers to the ether layer whereas the blue line refers to the water layer so as i have uh, shown you just now you can calculate the coordinates of uh, point m uh, point l naught and point v n plus one so um the next uh, coordinate that you can plot, although you don't know the full coordinate, is the point uh, LN, where the uh, XAN equals to 0 0.04, uh, and you don't know yet the XCN, but you do know that point LN should lie on the phase equilibrium. So it should lie in the blue line, in the water layer, because LN is a raffinate, the, uh, the exit raffinate phase. So what you can do is you locate point um, XAN here. 
okay which is uh, 0 0.04 here yeah, 0 0.04 x a n then from here you can get the point x c n so this is your point l n okay so as a uh, okay just to recap so this is point m this is point b n plus 1 with the coordinate 0 1 and this is your point l naught with the coordinate 0 0.30 uh, and 0 um, so b n plus 1 m and l naught should lie on the same line and same goes to the point uh, l n m and also v1 should lie on the same one line all right so now that you know l n and the point m so if you connect the two points l n and m and you touch the uh, red line the ether layer you shall get the point b1 okay let's do that so here i am connecting the point l n and m okay then i get this point here which is the v1 okay this is v1 all right so from point v1 you can read uh, what are the coordinates ya1 and yc1 okay so you can read the coordinates for ya1 and you can read the coordinate for yc1 so you may get a more accurate number if you are drawing it on a paper or if you are doing it on your own um, using your own uh, excel graph but approximately the answer is uh, 0 0.08 for ya1 and yc1 equals to 0 0.90 whereas for xcn um, if you look here it's close to 0 0.2 but if you do it properly using your own graph paper or your own excel file you may get xcn equals to 0 0.017 okay even if you really want to be accurate and you scale or you know you just magnify the the scale of the axis so here you know xcn is 0 0.017 ya1 is 0 0.08 and yc1 is 0 0.09 so you can calculate the unknown flow rates so from the um, phase diagram we have found out the composition so we can put the known and unknown numbers oh, i'm sorry for this drawing so what i'm doing here is just to draw redraw again the stages in a multiple uh, LLE process. So here is your L naught. So X A naught equals to 0 0.3. X C naught equals to 0. Here is your V N plus 1 equals to 600. And Y A N plus 1 equals to 0. Y C N plus 1 equals to 1. Here is your L N. We don't know the flow rate. Uh, X A N equals to 0 0.04. X C N equals to 0 0.017 as read from the graph. And here is your extract phase, V1. You don't know the flow rate. This is what you want to find. Then YA1 equals to 0 0.08. And YC1 equals to 0 0.9. So now uh, you have two unknowns. So you can do two um, material balance equations. So uh, yeah, let's just do that. So uh, V1 plus uh, LN equals to L0 plus Vn plus 1 equals to 200 plus 600. So you have V1 plus Ln equal to 800. So this is uh, your one equation. And then another equation is if you want to do a balance on A or on C, up to you. So uh, let's say if we do a balance on C. Uh, so you have uh, L0 at C0 plus v n plus 1 y c n plus 1 equal to v1 y c1 plus l n x c n uh, so you just put in the known values so x c naught is uh, 0 and then uh, v n plus 1 600 times 1 equal to 0 0.90 v1 plus 0 0.017 ln so this is your equation number two so you have two equations and two unknown you can solve for ln and x uh, and v1 so let's say you try to solve so i got ln equals to 136 kilogram per hour 
and P1 equals to 664 kilogram per hour. Alright, that's all.